<laughs> Hi, it's me, Samantha, and thanks for um, clicking play on this video. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about a subject that I had. This morning, I woke up and something I had seen on Facebook had uh, made me want to discuss uh, something that I typically would never discuss. Uh, it has somewhat of a personal uh, attachment to me because the subject matter did affect me at one point in my life and even though that's in the past, uh, these type of things of course you carry with you. Um, you know, and I will put, well I may copy and paste or put a link, it, it depends, because I had um, written something on one of my Facebook postings early this morning. I'll probably just copy and paste it in the description bar, so take a look if you're curious. But the subject matter actually has to do with uh, domestic violence. And currently I'm not with anybody, which <laughs> if you know me, everybody knows that. Uh, however, I have had experiences in my past. Um, uh, one in particular, not my ex-boyfriend who I've been posting about, uh, we are still good friends and he was nothing, nothing like this, actually a decent, wonderful, wonderful man, um, but somebody else in my life whom I was with uh, was extremely mentally, emotionally, and in many other ways abusive to me directly, never to uh, anybody else in my household, just to me. It was a very personal um, kind of... <laughs> abuse, which is what happens when you're married to what I would call a uh, psychonarch, basically a psychopath, narcissist, <laughs> uh, somebody with a very malignant personality disorder. Um, not very many people have that. He does. Uh, anyway, and it's not so much about him, but the subject matter I wanted to talk about are the ill effects and how toxic um, the whole situation could be to a woman, and yes, I understand that men are also um, sometimes caught in domestic abuse situations. I totally understand that, but in my case, most of the ones I'm speaking of have to do with a female being in an abusive relationship, um, usually at the hands of a man, her husband, significant other, or boyfriend, something like that. I don't need to quote statistics. You could find those statistics easily online and, uh, you know, how bad it is and all of that. I'm just saying from my personal point of view, this morning something had just rubbed me the wrong way that I saw online that made me think, gosh, people that have never had to go through getting out of a situation or the heartache and the trauma of trying to figure out are you even being abused? Because when you're in a relationship with somebody that you as a woman, you love or you have feelings for and you're in a relationship and you're giving it your all and you're not aware or maybe it's just a little too hard to think that wow is how he's treating me abusive if he loved me he wouldn't do that so maybe it's something up here that tells me it's abuse when really it's not and that's more of a mind twist a mental mind moral twist that as a woman in love with somebody that is abusive You'll do anything to keep yourself from understanding that you're actually being abused because once you understand that you're actually in an abusive relationship, the pain of knowing that is overwhelming to the degree where you just, you're non-functional. What do you do? You see no way out. How do you get out? Do you even want out? You want things to work. That's a thing that I think a lot of other people, well-meaning people and friends and even family members don't understand that it's not something that uh, most women choose. They don't choose to be abused. They don't choose to fall in love with somebody not capable of loving them. Uh, it's not a conscious choice. So when one finds oneself in that position, and then you are confronted with knowing that and then not knowing what to do to fix it. Is it fixable? And granted, there are some relationships in which the man doesn't realize that he's what he's doing is abusive or that there's wrong. Who knows? Maybe they just were never taught. There are a lot of men 
that do care about their wives or their girlfriends and just don't know how to express it. And those are the ones that I have hope for. Those are the ones that relationships, if they get help, uh, the partner gets help, both of them get help, and that relationship can work. That marriage can work. It happens all the time. But the ones that I'm speaking of are the ones like what I experience and many other girls um, oftentimes with children experience. And those partners, those men do not want to get help. Those men cannot get help. They're not mentally insane nor are they socially defective. They're morally insane and fundamentally defective as human beings. There are people that walk around this earth, both men and women, that are like this. And I've said before to others that if you've never had that experience, then count yourself lucky. Anybody that has, myself included, wishes that they never came into contact with people like this because it is literally so destroying, it destroys lives, it kills countless women every year. Violence against women under the guise of she deserved it, she's a slut, <laughs> or all kinds of other labels that an abuser, and when I use abuser I use male and female, okay, just to be clear, but in my case, let me just say male, um, abusers will use in order to pigeonhole their partner into what they need in order to make it okay for them to abuse. And it's a very sick cycle, and so many women are trapped in that, and they have no support system. Society as a whole does not gear towards helping women get out of these situations. And so, so often, as I said in my post, women with their young children are locked into these abusive situations and they can't get out. There's not a lot of social support that will help. And granted, a lot of these women are in lower income classes because, I mean, it's a circular kind of situation. You know, without the resources, financial resources, educational resources to help women or even help men to learn that that's not appropriate or positive way to treat women and, and yourself and your family, and women don't have those resources, they end up staying stuck. And so you raise children in that environment that keeps the children stuck in that mental attitude so nobody ever gets out. That's the reason why so many domestic abuse things that you hear about on the news where a boyfriend or husband shoots or murders his wife or his entire family, it tends to be, oh, lower income, oh, those people versus people like what happens to myself and others. Abusers don't discriminate as far as social status, your skin color, your sexual orientation. <laughs> Abusers abuse in all walks of life, in every economic standing. Abusers abuse. And so this video today is basically about my, my strong desire, my strong stand against violence against women. Violence, especially against women with children. Because that, when children see their mothers being abused like that, that perpetuates that negativity. It, look at Patrick Stewart from Star Trek, Jean-Luc Picard, Captain Picard. Well, John, Patrick Stewart is a wonderful ambassador against domestic violence, especially against women. You can Google his name and domestic violence on YouTube. It will pull up all of his talks he's ever done. It's very powerful. It's very real. And to me, it gives a very interesting take on domestic violence and what happens to children that have to grow up watching this, as was the case with him, with his mother. And he loved both his parents. His father happened to be an abuser and he got to watch his mother being abused and the effect it had on him as a young man and eventually growing up into a man and having to confront those traumas as a child that he was forced to endure. So it is, it is really important to me as a mother, as a single woman, that I come out and say that that is one thing that I am extremely passionate about because I was personally affected by it. I fought to overcome it and I've done so much personal work to 
get beyond that and I really have but every now and then somebody will I will witness or hear something what I would consider ignorant or, or uneducated comment about domestic violence survivors not victims by the way I can't stand that when people talk about women that have overcome domestic violence as somehow still with a victim mentality couldn't be further from the truth when you get out of a situation like that and you are a functioning adult, you are a good parent, you're doing your very best to give your best to your family, whether that includes another relationship that you're in now or just by yourself with your children. If you are doing that, then that makes you a survivor, not a victim. I can't stand it when I hear people over hear people or see people writing comments online that seem to still blame the woman for getting out, blame her for surviving, blame her for taking self-care steps for herself and her children that could only benefit future society. So it annoys me and I got a bit of a rant earlier this morning because of it, uh, but it did remind me that when I look at myself, I have come so far so far from where I was and nobody would look at me today and think that that is a domestic violence survivor because I don't typically look like your domestic violence survivor and that's okay and what I've come to realize is there are so many people that you probably interact with day in and day out and you have no idea of the horrors they have to go home to what they've got to endure or what they're currently enduring and praying and hoping for help or a way out. And my advice to those women, if they read this, see this, or know of anybody like this, is don't give up. You know, keep trying. Fundamentally, you are not created to be abused. And nobody is. Man, woman, child, nobody is created to be abused. It's not our natural state of being. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes you just got to fake it till you make it, you know, you got to just, even though you don't feel it, just tell yourself, I'm going to get out of it. It's going to get better one day and make small steps. Get friends. Talk to me. Send me a message. Reach out to others that you know are going to understand or that you know are not going to put you down for your experience and that they will give you a help up, not a smack down because you are for whatever reason currently being abused nobody deserves to be abused so with that uh, please look at some of the um, information I have down in the description bar uh, there are some really good tips and pointers about domestic violence abuse and um, especially if you have children and how to get out very basic simple steps but there are ways to get out please make use of them online google it do whatever you have to do, but you don't have to live in fear, nor do you have to live a half-life. And when you're being abused, what you're living is a half-life. And I don't have to live that. I haven't for a long time. You don't have to live like that. And if you know anybody else, mother, sister, friend, that's being abused, auntie, even a man, please encourage them to seek out help in a safe manner because it just kills me inside when I see that type of thinking being perpetuated through the generations, through our children. And it just, it just, it's so wrong. It's so wrong. So anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox about this subject, but it is a very good subject to be passionate about. And uh, I will till the day I die, because I believe that women were created to be treated with respect and dignity, just as all human beings were created to be treated with respect and dignity for their roles and for their natural gifts. So with that, I will say good night and have a good night and be kind to everybody else, please, because what this world needs is more kindness and more love, not more abuse. <laughs> It's the reason why I don't watch the news anymore. So anyway, this is Samantha signing off. I'll talk to you later. Bye.